Since 2014, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela has been the target of no less than 150 unilateral coercive measures, or sanctions, implemented by over 40 legal instruments and executive orders from the United States government and its allies, such as the European Union, the United Kingdom, the Lima Group, Canada, Panama, and Switzerland. These measures are part of systematic attempts at regime change against the South American country, which have escalated significantly in recent years, including threats of military intervention. Nevertheless, there is already an intervention underway with devastating effects, the economic, financial, and commercial blockade against Venezuela. And rather than the Maduro government, the main victims have been the Venezuelan people. New U.S. sanctions. Sanctions against. Sanctions. Maduro. Sanctions on Venezuela. The sanctions were another option to send him a message. It's sanctions is the way to do that. The sanctions. Sanctions against. Sanctions. War by other means. Ever since the Bretton Woods Agreement, from the Torricelli-Graham Act against Cuba, to the Trading with the Enemy Act applied against North Korea, all the way to the Obama Decree against Venezuela, the United States has resorted to these policies to pressure countries that refuse to toe the line. Here are the main examples. 1950, North Korea. Korea is a small country. With the U.S. taking part in the Korean War on the South Korean side, then-President Harry Truman decided to implement coercive economic measures against North Korea with a complete embargo on exports, looking to weaken what was then an ally of the Soviet Union. 1960, Cuba. President Eisenhower imposed severe sanctions following the nationalization of U.S. properties and strategic companies in Cuba. The blockade was subsequently intensified until completely forbidding any goods from going in, including food and medicine. 1990, Iraq. In the context of the first Gulf War, Washington imposed sanctions against Iraq, blocking all imports, with some exceptions of food and medicine, and forbidding any exports of oil and derivatives. I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. Sanctions escalated in the years that followed, until 2003 when they gave way to the next military invasion of Iraq, under the false pretense that Iraq possessed weapons of mass destruction. Fast forward to the present. The U.S. is still oppressing the peoples and nations that stand in the way of its interests, and the brutal attacks are now targeting Venezuela, subjecting the Caribbean nation to a political, commercial, and financial blockade whose effects are yet to be fully felt. December 18, 2014. The United States Congress approves the Venezuela Defense of Human Rights and Civil Society Act. The bill contemplates the freezing of assets belonging to individuals or companies in U.S. territory or under U.S. jurisdiction, as well as blocking dealings with Venezuelan state officials, entities, and companies. March 8, 2015. The 2014 Act is elevated to Executive Order 13692, known as the Obama Decree, in which Venezuela is labeled an unusual and extraordinary threat to U.S. national security. This decree became the legal basis for all of the unilateral measures and sanctions applied since then. From May to December of 2016, banks such as Commerce Bank in Germany, Novo Banco in Portugal, and JP Morgan in the US, alongside other companies, lend themselves to the commercial blockade, resulting in Venezuela facing growing difficulties to find intermediaries for its financial transactions. July to August 2017, Delaware Trust, PNC Bank, and Citibank all U.S. financial institutions refuse to receive Venezuelan funds and forbid their clients from dealing with Venezuela. August 24th, 2017. It's a strong message for um, the people of Venezuela. The U.S. government imposes Executive Order 13808, prohibiting the direct or indirect sale of Venezuelan government bonds, tightening the financial boycott and the policy of isolating the Venezuelan banking sector, and severely affecting the operations of the state oil company PDVSA. August to December 2017, Bank of China, BDC Shandong, UBS Group, Deutsche Bank, and a number of Russian banks are pressured by the U.S. Treasury Department to shut down Venezuelan accounts and freeze money that was destined for imports of food, medicine, and other basic goods. Rating agency Standard & Poor's declares Venezuela to be in selective default. January to April 2018. Payments related to 11 government and PDVSA bonds totaling $1.2 billion cannot be made to creditors due to obstacles imposed by sanctions. The Trump administration blocks the repatriation of dividends from the Venezuelan U.S. oil subsidiary, Citgo. May 21, 2018. A new executive order, 13835, 
escalates the economic blockade against Venezuela in response to Nicolas Maduro's re-election victory. Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro, has been declared winner of Sunday's election. The obstacles to transactions or renegotiation of debt are increased, targeting not only the Venezuelan government, but all state companies, among them the central bank and PDVSA. May to November 2018. The Brazilian government stops paying for electricity supplied to it by Venezuela, following threats from the U.S. State Department. The Trump administration forbids U.S. citizens and companies from dealing with gold exported from Venezuela. January 2019 to the present. The U.S. continues to escalate the economic strangulation, imposing new sanctions against sectors such as mining and institutions such as the central bank. The Bank of England announces the illegal seizure of $1.3 billion worth of Venezuelan gold. There are also sanctions against shipping companies, making the importation of food and medicine even harder. One of the latest attacks targeted the CLAP program, which benefits 6 million Venezuelan families with food boxes at subsidized prices. More recently, on August 5th, Washington elevated its sanctions program to a definitive embargo, blocking all Venezuelan state assets in U.S. territory and threatening to impose secondary sanctions against countries and companies that maintain commercial relations with Venezuela. Washington's preference for these methods is no mystery. The influential think tank Council on Foreign Relations argued in a report that sanctions provide a visible and less expensive alternative to military intervention, taking for granted the tremendous U.S. interest in controlling Venezuelan territory, resources, and institutions. And sometimes there are even chilling confessions. In this administration, uh, we're not afraid to use the phrase Monroe Doctrine. This, this is a country in our hemisphere. It's been the objective of American presence.